<laughs> McCarthy's films are records of live theatrical events that call the bluff of the Francis Bacon rhetoric. For McCarthy really has driven audiences gagging from the gallery with his gruesome use of family-sized quantities of horrible foodstuffs. The harsh lighting and cheap sets and the look of trashy daytime sitcoms isn't because that's all McCarthy can do. It's a calculated look, a controlled vision. Reality is lies, McCarthy says. There isn't any truth, so let's look at the lies and see what they're really saying. Hey, it's a virtual world of controlled infantilism we all live in. De Kooning, de Kooning, yeah, de Kooning, de Kooning, de Kooning, whoa, de Kooning. So, uh, what are the characters that we're seeing here, and what are they doing? Um, well, there were. There were two elves, a green elf and a blue elf, and the reindeer uh, sat down in the hole with his uh, ass hanging down in. The chocolate flows through a funnel. The Santa Claus stoops over and pours as if he's taking a, a dump. But it's really also just pouring chocolate into a funnel, and the chocolate being both chocolate as in Christmas, and. Mm chocolate in association to shit, and then this eating it, you know, eating the chocolate, the kind of gluttony of eating chocolate, but also eating shit. But it's not eating it with any uh, pleasure. It's not like we're yum yum. Well, it's, it's like a, it's, being tortured to it, it, it's, it's a bit obsessional, you know, like she, in this case, is, you know, just, it's a kind of gorging. You know. When I walked unsuspectingly into a gallery a few years ago and saw this very film, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was like the magic roundabout meets the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I think I had something like what doctors call a shock. <laughs> L.A. Noir, plastic politeness. They get together and it's virtual lightness, the new nightmare darkness. And it comes seeping out of this place. Hollywood, TV, the media. What are they doing to us? This is a film by the young British artists Jake and Dinos Chapman. The stars are two actresses and a third participant, a disembodied head with a penis nose. I think anyone being shocked by it is really demonstrating, is really making some theatrical kind of overexposure of themselves to actually signal something. You don't turn up at a, a showing of a porn film and then profess to be shocked. The Chapman's film is an offshoot from the works they're most notorious for, their children mannequins, hyper-realistic, hyper-horrible. They see them as a play on imagery that is already current in the popular imagination, but at an unconscious level. You can't be shot by us, these mannequin mutants say to an outraged public. You produced us. Is our work shocking? No. There's a degree to which our work is so gratuitously overburdened that it cancels itself out. That, that there's nothing in our work that could be taken seriously in the way that one would take shock seriously. There's nothing that would traumatise in our work, that our work only offers the possibility of laughter, if anything. When artists nowadays do their frightening, forbidden fantasy subjects, there's a definite surrounding ironic discourse goo that makes the work cool rather than just horrible. Even though in our more sensitive moments, especially if we're parents, their works are actually rather horrible. I suppose we'd like to drag refined aesthetic natures um, towards something uh, more base, I suppose. 
The Chapman's first big hit in the art world was based on the greatest hitter of them all. Rather than reviving Goya's general humanist theme, as Damien Hirst does, this work directly revives Goya's imagery, his suite of etchings, Disasters of War, redone as a tabletop model using epic soldiers. These little shockers were mutated by being melted and cut with pen knives and then carefully painted. A later spectacle was one of the tableaus, Great Deeds Against the Dead, realized in horribly life-size form as a Frankenstein monster. Goya's realism is contrasted with the nutty unrealism of high street shop window culture, the fashion dummy. Goya is about desecration, but this is a re-desecration of one of the sites that sent him off the rails. The details here, the airbrush nipples and nylon wigs and exposed, awkward seams of the limbs, the weirdly sexual look of the figures, their heroin chic complexions, they all suggest a perverse departure from Goya's original theme of horror at atrocity, the subterranean desire drives of the 1990s consumer world. Our interpretation of Goya really does subtract Goya's heroic individual ego from the intentions of his own work. And maybe that's the difference, is that there is a kind of alienated spectacularism in our work, but with someone like Goya, there's an actual direct approach to uh, the raw material. We're coming to the end of the ride now, the ghost train winding down, the plastic skeletons all put away. But is it really only a show? The fact is, there's a taste out there for shocks. We're obsessed by them, because that's our world. It's not just the world of art, and art history isn't just history. Goya shows us Satan and madness, because his nightmares are of those things. He was an Enlightenment intellectual, moving towards social progress and liberty, and away from darkness and tyranny and superstition. His shocks vividly stage that, and in their combination of directness and strangeness, they throw light on modern life. But what are shocks for now? What's the modern world that artists nowadays are vividly staging? There's a long distance between the shocks of Tracy Emin and the Chapmans, but what unites them is the sense that nowadays is a place where opposites don't always seem like opposites, where lightness might be the confusing or unbearable lightness of the mass media, and where we've got the social progress that Goya longed for, and darkness and tyranny and superstition all mixed up. I'm sorry I wear glasses and act like an ironic intellectual. Actually, I'm shocked all the time. I was shocked when the Sex Pistols came out. I still can't really get over it. I'm shocked by everything. The news is the worst. Some things enter and you can't get rid of them. I'm shocked by art all the time too, but not in that way. All art does is make an image for the problem of when that happens, when the bad stuff gets in and stays there, and you have to adapt to it. Art isn't therapy. It's not the new religion. It's not a code of life, it's just an image.